Good morning, folks. Today we've got news on all fronts, including an Easter egg from the Goddard Space Flight Center. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're going to find the last 24 hours on our star was more calm than in past days where at least we saw minor activity around the Earth facing half of the sun. We did indeed watch a large filament lift up and snap just over the northwestern limb. That one's going to head north of Mercury. Even with movement of the umbral magnetic fields above sunspots, they've failed to gain any magnetic complexity and the solar flaring remains flatlined. You can see that here on the X-ray flux. The lone sunspot group on the disk is spread. Little positive umbra trying to develop in a sea of red. We're going to see how that goes today. Solar wind here. Yesterday's analysis appears sound as no more coronal hole streams re-ramp the speed you see in yellow. It is dropping out after that super fast wave from the night before, and Earth's magnetic field is calming down now. We do have more coronal holes on the way. Equatorial extension of the northern opening faced Earth last night. It was to bring only a minor watch, and that matches what we had posted the night before on Twitter. Minor blot echoes ringing in the Philippines and Indonesia. And that was the only location called out. While well, 6.6 struck the area, about 22 hours later, it was the leading quake of the day. But we also do need to note the 5.6 in the Caribbean, where four pointers are above the weekly average there. A 5.6 is about as significant as a six-pointer somewhere else in the world. Top story, folks. A new solar energetic particle model now demonstrates why the sun doesn't have to fire directly at you for the electrical changes to occur. They actually go beyond their animation and say that these particles can hit Earth even from an eruption off the opposite side of the sun, which is vastly more accurate than the old model. But folks, this is solar protons and electrons, and the absolute best aspect of their model is that they all hit the 1AU mark at about the same time, driving one electric field and one magnetic system. That's what can couple with the Earth when it hits that distance, regardless of where it fired away. And folks, this is one step closer to mechanistic proof of non-Earth-directed CME coupling for storms and earthquakes. Next up, the case is being made for serious consideration of life on Mars. There's water, organic compounds, methane in the atmosphere, and these scientists have reinterpreted 1976 Viking satellite data, and they say it actually shows the existence of life. Whoa. Up next, climate update for the planet looking back to September. No claim of hottest month ever this time with a nice balance of extremes. If they showed Antarctica, it would be an asinine sweeping blue. And as always, this is the real chart, yet the one you'll see biased media reporting this week is this one. Look at how red this is. Much of the blue actually disappeared. A lot of that is over the oceans, but all in all, over 50% of the colder readings can be hidden. Don't get fooled. Link is found below. Tropic Watch takes us to the Atlantic, where a system here will develop over the coming two days. Meanwhile, two Earth spots across the Pacific, one at China and Vietnam, and one is about to run right over the Philippines, and then it will turn and swing up towards Japan. Earth spot quake alerts for local regions should be in effect. We've got pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.05 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.